Slave Population and Economy in Jamaica, 1807-1834. Slave Population and Economy in Jamaica, 1807-1834. By Higman, B. W. Cambridge. Slave Population and Bibliography. In N. This Superb Study, Higman makes imaginative use of quantitative data, demographic, economic, and geographical, to throw new light on long standing conundrums in the understanding of slave societies. Focusing on the complex interrelationship between changes in the structure of Jamaica's slave population and in its plantation economy during the years between the abolition of the slave trade and emancipation, Higman not only deepens our knowledge of slavery in Jamaica, but raises numerous challenges to the received wisdom about slavery in other parts of the Americas. Tightly argued, flowingly literate, and always sensitive to variations within the local slave regime, this book exemplifies the judicious use of quantitative data to elucidate problems of broad humanistic concern. Three chapters on the economy describe in detail, 1, the distribution of the slave labor force, revealing, for example, that in 1832 fewer than 50% of slaves were attached to sugar estates, 2, the differential character of the major agricultural enterprises, sugar estates, coffee plantations, livestock pens, and so forth, including their size, work routines, internal organization, and the nature of master-slave relations, and, three, the organization of non-agricultural slave-based enterprises, such as extractive industries, manufacturing, and transportation. The changing population structure is then covered in a lengthy four-chapter section. Using documents, mainly from Jamaica archives, that have rarely been mined before, Higman provides a wealth of fascinating material about population growth and movement, population distribution within the island, changing age, sex, and African Creole ratios, all broken down whenever possible by parishes or individual estates. In an extended analysis of patterns of survival, he demonstrates that high mortality, not low fertility, was the key to population decline during the period that neither high sex ratios nor high African Creole ratios depressed fertility, and that variations in the rate of natural increase of the slave population depended on the type of economic activity in which the slaves were employed, page 138. His discussion of the interrelationship among color, family organization, and fertility raises many crucial questions about our understanding of Jamaican slavery, suggesting tentatively, but provocatively, that during the period of study the family was an important social unit, and even that African-born slaves may have been especially likely to reside in nuclear family households. The final section of the book addresses the ways planters coped with their changed situation after the abolition of the slave trade. Confronted with a fixed labor force, changes in the structure of which he was largely powerless to control, page 187, the Jamaican planter developed a number of temporarily effective strategies. For example, as the number of slaves in the most productive age groups declined, and an ever-increasing proportion of slaves were female, planters simply sent more and more women to the fields. Indeed, Higman concludes that planters were sufficiently able to rationalize the uses of their slave labor force, e.g., by shifting labor to regions and tasks where returns could be maximized so that the efficiency of slave labor did not in fact decline, the post-1820 economic decline of Jamaica, he argues, can be attributed to external market factors rather than to stresses within the slave system itself. Nevertheless, the final brief chapter explores the effects of the planters' changing strategies of occupational allocation on the slaves themselves. Higman argues that the growing gap between the number of slaves who had reasonable expectations of higher status within the system and the number of such positions actually available was a root cause of the major slave rebellion of 1831. This study, which won the Bancroft Prize in 1977, breaks new substantive and methodological ground, and should be required reading for anyone with an interest in slavery in the Americas. Issue Section 
Related topics. Copyright 1981 by Duke University Press.